Hmm. So you finally decided to fight your own battles. Yup. Now that I think about it, it's my dream. Therefore, there's no way I'm gonna lose. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is my dream. As long as I keep that in mind, there's nothing I can't do. Where's all this coming from? I can sense her power increasing. Her power? It's much stronger than a Prinny's. How is this possible? That lass, by believing that everything that's happened around her is a dream, has released her full potential. Here's an explanation. Humans are said to only be able to utilize about 30% of their full potential. That's because using 100% of their power would apply too much of a physical burden on their body and would lead to self-destruction. However, this girl was able to release her full power due to her delusional belief that everything is part of a dream, including her own existence. Some people call it a girl's fantasy, which can prove more troublesome than anything else. Lord Val, please be cautious. This lass is an idiot, but she possesses power comparable to us demons. Aha! That is impressive! Yes, I agree. However, now is not the time to be awestruck. We're in quite a bit of danger. I've had enough of this chaotic dream! I want a dream that's sweet and lovely, like marshmallows! I want to swim in a pool of passion fruit jelly and boba! I want to coincidentally bump into a prince from a foreign country, fall in love and elope while he's carrying me in his arms! With that said, get out of my dream right now! I don't mind a shameless floozy who freely shouts such embarrassing things. Though I'm going to have to wake you up and engrave the truth into your tiny brain over and over until you accept reality! Boss fight! <laughs> I like this song. It's a vocal remix of an older song from the older games. Um, yeah, Fuka. She uses an axe. Um, she's got great attack. And for a boss, she's got a good ability. A ninth grader who couldn't become a pretty. She thinks this is just her dream. Poor deluded fool. Damage decreased by 50% when receiving a special attack. Good for her, not for me. <laughs> la, 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 la. This is... Yeah, Flan's... I think it's Flan's theme from the first game. Correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember offhand. Swing for the majors! Home run! A lot of her attacks are baseball themed. If you haven't noticed, she's got a bat. So yeah, uh, we got monsters all around. Warp panels. If you step stand on them, you'll be randomly warped to another area of the map. Uh, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna go to the other side and uh, put the enemy weakened, um, the weakened enemies by 50% because you know I don't think I'd be able to beat this map otherwise as I am now. Possibly. Oh, I hate it when they have such little health left. I find that happening a lot. To be honest. Alright, does, does she kill it? Nope, not even close. Um, let's see here. So, the character class of the day that we'll be going over is the witch. Um, you know, the female mage. Like my Din, Nehru, and Feywar. Alright, here we go. Description. Witches are the female counterpart to magicians. Instead of trying to outdo the men with bigger single spells, these casters give you the most bang for your buck. They're extremely efficient and thus can last as many matches in a row without needing to stop at a hospital. Excuse me, gas. Uh, without needing to stop at a hospital. For the story battles, this is a needless trade-off. You can use the hospital between any fight, so only a really long fight has the potential to eliminate casters' reserves quickly. In the item world, however, that balances of power shifts quickly. It's harder to keep your reserves strong when a group must lay as many as 10 levels in a row without assistance. 
because of this, witches come into their own later in the game when you start to spend even more time in item world and character world. Enlarge might not seem like that exciting of an ability to take because it doesn't do much to your stats. However, it comes in handy. And Enlarge, her tier 4 ability, um, increases your magic range by one panel. Um, let's see. Casters already get to use some of their abilities at extremely long range. Adding yet one more square can mean the difference between sniping an enemy without return fire or contending with opponents that may race in for attacks of their own. Unless every point of firepower is needed, Enlarge is a more useful ability for a caster than a magician's magic conversation. Uh, sorry, magic conversion. Uh, which happens to... 10% uh, of current SP is added to intelligence, and that's for the male magician class. Let's see here. <laughs> Lost my place. Oh, there we go. It's always good to learn both so that you can switch back and forth, but that requires some serious class switching, and some people won't uh, want to be bothered with that. Witches, like magicians, have weaker resistances early in their careers. Uh, Low-tier witches are resistant to their own elements and vulnerable to one another. These heavy damage dealers are always a valuable part of your campaign. Warriors with axes are extremely skilled single-target killers. Oh. <laughs> That's right. This this guy has a lot of typos and errors in it. I'm not kidding. As soon as the witch paragraph um, description ends, no joke, the entire warrior description follows right after it. I don't know how an oversight that big is even possible. That's just nuts. Um... So I think I just noticed a... Like a s s frame skip. Uh, I, again, I apologize. There's nothing I can do. I mean, the game. Re I, re I record the footage, and if it's not there, I <laughs> I can't add it in. So you're just gonna have to bear with the small skips. Um, class skills: elemental spells, fire, wind, and ice. Uh, unlike other classes where you begin with one tier, the mage and the the magician and the witch, you can choose any um, elemental alignment. So there are three, there's, there's really four tiers for these two cl um, classes, and um, the first, you know, the fire, water, and wind, they all have equal stats, the only thing that differs is what magic spells they learn, and what their base resistances are. But, um, okay, elemental spells. These spells apply all damage to a given type of resistance. Your caster should look at all the enemies that are in range before casting and exploit the largest weakness. After pur purchasing an elemental spell, you get the option to spend mana boosting their s that skill and or you can also purchase a higher tier version of the same elemental type. Megafire, for example, is a higher damage version of the basic fire spell. Star. Higher tier casters leave their elemental roots behind and get a chance to learn the star spell. So, um, if you level up, to get a uh, a star mage, just level up any basic, uh, sorry, star witch, just level up any witch to... Oh, it says level 2 witches up to level 50. I, I think, it says level 50, star 2. So I, I'm guessing two different witches up to level 50. Um... Uh, star mages are different in that here, let me, let me finish reading this one. This is a magic tech that powers through enemies' resistances. Though you won't often see Star top out as much damage as an elemental spell used against an especially vulnerable enemy, you also won't have to risk doing low damage because your target is resistant to your best spells. Like the elemental attack spells, Star has Mega and Giga versions that you can purchase as well. If your caster is the Star Skull Mage tier, they can then master Omega and Terra Star as well. Yeah, star is kind of like elemental neutral. Um, it, it doesn't qualify as not having an elemental property. It has the star property. It's just that there's no resistance or weakness to the star element. So don't confuse that with an elemental list special skill. Um, the benefit of a, of star is that because it because nothing resists it. It is the magic spell of choice against um, boss characters or enemies that don't have any elemental vulnerabilities. 
Um, also, if in Ina World you're attacking a large group of enemies and most of them, um, and you find the resistances are just too scattered, just pick a star spell and hit them all for neutral. It's probably better than getting a super effective hit on two and, like, resistant attacks on three others. Um, it, the benefit of the Witch and the Skull is that each one can learn up to the highest level of, of spells in their category, that being the Terra spells. It's Normal, Mega, Giga, Omega, and Terra. Um, some other classes can learn magic, but they don't learn up to um, the Omega or Terra spells. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, just got a phone call. Um, what was I talking about? Totally lost my train of thought. Um, right. Other classes can learn um, magic of different elements, but the magicians and the witches are one of the few classes that can actually learn the strongest spells in the game. So that's why it's worth it to use. And then afterwards, you can... Well, either you can make a class and then reincarnate them into something else, or you can just go through the character world and pass on the magic to other classes. Like, a, a Measle, the character, for example, can't... He learns magic, but I don't think he can learn Omega or Terra spells, which is why you would want a witch to learn them and then transfer them, or... No, you'd have to do that, because a Measle can't reincarnate into a gen generic class. Uh, but on top of that, they also learn two other spells. Slumber, which puts enemies to sleep, and Stun, which lowers the target speed to one and prevents them from moving. I hardly ever use those. I usually just do it right hand. Um. So yeah, red, green, and blue mages all have the same stats. Then there's the star mage, the prism mage, and the galaxy mage. And the galaxy mage can actually learn all four elements. They can learn star, um, fire, wind, and ice. By themselves, so that's pretty handy. Uh, let's see, base stats for the lowest tier: HP, aptitude 70, pretty pathetic. Th these these people, these girls always die in one hit. I'm not kidding. Um, SP 130, attack 70, defense 80, intelligence 130, really good. Resistance 100, hit 110, and speed 100. Galaxy Mage, the highest tier. HP, 85, not even at 100. SP, 155. Attack, 85. Defense, 95. Intelligence, 155. Re resistance, 125. Hit, 135. And speed, 125. Ah, so, all in all, they're, they're worth making for their spells. But um, you use them to use them for going through the Iron World and being able to hit a lot of enemies at once. Because with their SP consumption, which is lower, you can use area of effect spells more often, which is very useful in the Iron World. Uh, their big yeah, their special skills cost half as much to use. That's their base ability. Second ability, concentrate. Thirty base of intelligence is added to hit when a staff is equipped. Um, this improves your basically this improves your accuracy. Which is useful because you basically snipe with mages from afar, so you want good hits uh, um, to in to ensure that uh, you actually do damage to the enemy you're trying to get rid of. Uh, magic wand damage by staff attacks is based on your intelligence stat as opposed to your attack. Pointless considering your spells will pretty much always do more damage. And enlarge, like I said, increases your magic uh, range by one. Uh, pretty handy. Although, I believe one of the hidden characters in the game has a... Here we go. Oh god, I'm almost done. I don't even notice half the time when I'm reading these descriptions. Uh, yeah, that should be the whole thing. So yeah, mages. Definitely make them. Learn their spells, pass them on to stronger units. And that's it for this chapter. The hell? How could I lose? This is my dream! Even if it's a nightmare, I don't deserve any more punishment!
punishment! I don't approve of this! Lass, you keep speaking of a nightmare and punishment. What kind of hardships have you been through? You really want to know, huh? I get shivers down my spine from just thinking about it. Every day and night, we cooked, cleaned, did the laundry, and other ridiculous tasks, like looking for some ultra dessert. On top of all that, we only got paid one sardine a day for 20 hours of life-threatening hard labor. It's cool that I don't have to study or do homework, but I don't get to eat any sweet desserts or dress up and go out. For a girl, it's the same thing as being told to go kill yourself. If this isn't a nightmare, then what would you call it? But that's pretty normal. Huh? 20 hours labor for one sardine a day? That's standard treatment for Brinny. You're no exception. Huh? No, you're lying. I heard that normal Prinnies are treated like VIPs. They only work for an hour, get three meals a day, with dessert, and even get nap time. I heard they also live in luxury hotel suites. How did you manage to believe all that? So, are you saying that even if we exterminate all of the normal prinnies, our living conditions won't change at all? You are correct. No this is impossible! Lass, who do you think the prinnies are? People become prinnies to pay off the sins they committed in the human world. Prinnies don't get to choose their living conditions. The only thing they get to do is work hard until they pay off their sins. But why? I didn't do anything bad. You're lying. This is all a lie. I want to prove of this. Hey, hey, wait. I'm not done talking to you. My lord, please wait. There is a contaminated area up ahead filled with pollution. I hear it's brimming with mutated monsters. <coughs> See? Enough, Fenric! As a pretty instructor, I cannot leave her there! Let's go, Fenric! <sighs> All is for my lord.